Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the National Museum of Military Vehicles. My name is Doug Hubbison. I'm the curator of the museum, and I'll be the master of ceremonies for this evening, or for this after, this morning. And uh, I tell you, we're lucky. We've been blessed with beautiful weather on this Armed Forces Day 2021. And we're going to begin this program as we begin all programs in Wyoming with the Pledge of Allegiance and we will face the large flag to your right rear. As is traditional, veterans are provided, permitted to salute. All other guests, please remove your hats and place your heart, hands over your heart. Veterans present arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, Please take your seats. Forty-six years ago is, was the events that we call today the Mayaguez Rescue or Mayaguez Incident in Cambodia. On May 12, 1975, Cambodian Khmer Rouge Navy seized the SS Mayaguez, a United States flagged commercial cargo vessel off the coast of Cambodia. The Cambodians seized both the vessel. You think I'd be used to the Wyoming wind by now. Seized both the vessel and its crew. President Gerald Ford determined that the full might of the United States would rescue both the vessel and most importantly its crew. And a rescue operation was beginning, uh, began to be hastily organized from units in Cambodia Viet and uh, off the shores of Cambodia and Vietnam, Thailand, and the Philippines. While this expedition was being organized, a United States Air Force helicopter with a large number of men from an Air Force Special Police, uh, Security Police Squadron crashed on takeoff, killing everybody on board. 46 years ago and this morning, companies D, 1st of the 4th Marines, companies Echo and Golf, 2nd of the 9th Marines, landed on Koh Tang Island to rescue the crew. It's uh, not appropriate for me to give a full history lesson. Those of you who know me know that I could spring forth into that at any moment but it's not appropriate here today. But in heavy fighting and day-long fighting, the Cambodians released the crew unharmed from the Mayaguez, companies D, 1st of the 4th Marine, and the USS Holt, in a daring ship-on-ship -ship action, pulled the Holt alongside the Mayaguez, and the Marines did something they had not done since the Civil War, which was climb over the sides of the ship to storm and seize the Mayaguez. During day-long combat operations on Koh Tang Island, Golf and Echo companies, supported by the United States Air Force, had day-long intense fighting, and finally they departed the island, their mission successfully accomplished that evening. We are fortunate to have here today five survivors of that combat mission, I'm going to read their names individually, and I'll ask my brothers to stand up. Staff Sergeant Clark H. Hale, Platoon Sergeant, 3rd Platoon, Company E, 2nd of the 9th Marines. Platoon Sergeant Hale, I, I want to say something about him. At the age of 17, Marine Hale was one of the Marines on March 6, 1965 to land at Da Nang Harbor and the first wave and the first American fighting men committed to ground combat in Vietnam. And this engagement on May 15, 1975, considered the last engagement of the Vietnam War, then Platoon Sergeant Hale was the platoon sergeant in charge of a whole platoon of Marines. He served at the beginning and the end of the Vietnam War and is the only Marine to be distinguished to have served in the first landing and the last engagement.
Corporal Ronald Ron Scott, Headquarters and Supply, 2nd of the 9th Marines. Petty Officer 2nd Class, John Stewart. Uh, he's the Vice President of Mayaguez Veterans. He served with the United States Navy on board the USS Coral Sea, supporting combat operations ashore. Private First Class, Richard A. Radar Frazee, Company G, 2nd of the 9th Marines. Finally, Private First Class, Terrence L. Terry Brooks, 3rd Platoon, Echo Company, 2nd of the 9th Marines. <laughs> Folks, we're in the presence of five American heroes. Could we collectively give a round of applause to these five American heroes? Thank you. We also have uh, one distinguished guest and some family members I want to identify. Gerald Hale, brother of Clark Hale. Where are you at, Gerald? Up oh, there he is. He's hiding. Julianne Fowler, she is the brother of the late PFC David L. Fowler, 3rd Platoon, Company E, 2nd of the 9th Marines, who was wounded in action in the actions of Cotang. We, this museum, uh, and has a special uh, thanks to Julie. She uh, was able to, if you will, hook up the museum with Terry Brooks and make this event possible. So Julie, thank you for making that happen. We appreciate it a great deal. We have Ruth, uh, Ruth Scott, husband of Ron Scott, or wife. I, I apparently was exhausted by driving the Humvee this morning. And then uh, finally, Terry Brooks' wife, Mrs. Catherine Ann Cathy Brooks. 42 years. 42 years. And we also have one dignitary I'd like to recognize, the VFW Senior Commander, Jim Risch. Sir. It's the uh, honor for me now to uh, please call PFC Terry Brooks Ford, and he has a presentation to make to the museum. Terry? Bear with me. Thanks for coming. Uh, I want to thank my brothers for coming. I want to thank the families and friends for coming of my brothers. Clark wouldn't have made it without his brother. Um, who else am I supposed to thank? Oh, I have to thank the Lord above for making this happen because it was meant to be. And why is it meant to be? Because Highway 26, we have a Highway 26 in Oregon. We drove, the wife and I. We came down into Jackson, we did all that. And then we saw Lake, Brooks Lake. Our last name is Brooks. We went to the Lone Burrito. I thought I was gonna get a burrito. <laughs> I look at the menu and there's a burger, TLB. My initials. This was meant to be. And if it wasn't for this lady, I gave up. I gave up on trying to get my truck in the proper place to represent. I called Jay Leno, left a message, emailed, oh, no response. Long story, I could go on and on how people don't know about this battle. That's why it says a forgotten battle. And you know why it's on my truck? because Channel 6 News of Portland, Oregon, they thought that the SS Mayersk, the ship that the Somalians pirated, and then they made a movie, Captain Phillips. They thought that was the last pirated ship in 200 years. 
and I called bull on them. They never responded. Put it on my truck. There's another truck on the East Coast that I took a lot of this off of, but I did a little bit more. And uh, that's why it's here. If I would have passed before this happened, who knows where my truck would be. It needs to be here, and it is. And thank you so much for accepting me. Uh, who else? Who else? I don't. I I don't know. I just I had a, a nice speech, and you know you wake up early and you're all nervous and you think, oh, how am I going to do this? I think I've done enough. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank the Patriot Guards, all you guys, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Ray, for taking care of my brother, watching after him. All right. What's next? I'll take over from here. All right. Radar has a few words he wants to say. Radar, please step up. Brother. May 15th, <clears throat> 1975 will live in my memory and all these guys eternally. Um, it was a day of infamy. Um, <clears throat> for 46 years, I've collected intel and I finally found a home for it. This needs to be recorded for prosperity and the future generations. That's it. Semper Fi. I'd now like Dan Starks, the museum uh, CEO and founder, to say a few words on behalf of the museum. You hear a lot about the heartland of America without really knowing exactly where it is and what it looks like. Well, here it is, and this is what it looks like. A, bu a bunch of Americans supporting each other, thanking each other, honoring each other's service, honoring the sacrifice of our veterans and of the families of veterans, remembering the fallen, passing the stories on to future generations to make sure that the stories of the rescue of the SS Marguez are never forgotten along with the stories of so many other veterans and so many other areas of combat. Terry, you've done something really good. Thank you so much for what you've done. Uh, ca carrying the torch, remembering your brothers, remembering the fallen, remembering the families. You've been a bit of a voice in the wilderness being as loud as you can by yourself. It's the, it's the, we're, we're so pleased that you have reached out to us now and that you have entrusted uh, your tribute to the National Museum of Military Vehicles. And I can assure you that you can rest. You can lay down the baton. We're picking it up. And we will now forever after, even after all of us here are gone, forever after, we will remember what you and what your brothers did this day 46 years ago and will remember all of those who did not get another day to their life. Thank you so much for letting us be part of your history. We are now have a few brief remarks from uh, the veteran of foreign war, Senior Commander Jim Rich. Jim? Well, thank you for the invite to be here. I appreciate it. This is really a great day, a great day for the museum, too. I'd like to remind everybody <clears throat> that when somebody joins the military, they give up a certain amount of their constitutional rights, namely the First Amendment, and they project themselves under a, the Uniform Code of Military Justice which really means that they have to follow the lawful orders of those who are appointed above them. And when they join the military, they do this without any reservation. They give up that First Amendment right because you can't say no to a lawful order. 
you can't say what you want to say all the time. And so each and every one of us that joined the military have given up a certain amount of constitutional rights that those who haven't served in the military never seem to understand. And so when the order came down for May 15th to go rescue Jeremiah Guest, there was no reservation with any of these men here. There was no reservation with anybody that was on that team. Somebody had done something against America, okay? And that's all these individuals needed. That's what being American is about. No reservations whatsoever. And while May 15th lives in the minds of every one of these guys, February 1968, the Tet Offensive is in mind. And so at this time, brothers, I say you guys, you guys are out of place. Thank you. We are now going to read the names of the 41 fallen during the Mayaguez operation. The veterans are going to read, and uh, we have the list right here. Uh, at the end of the reading, I will make a brief announcement and we will then play taps. When taps is played, it is traditional to face the American flag. Again, veterans salute citizens, stand at attention, remove their headgear, and will place their hands over their hearts. The first names that are read are the fallen of the 56th Security Police Squadron, United States Air Force, who fell in a helicopter accident during the operation May 13, 1975. I've read these names at the embassy in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. I've read these names out there on the island of Koh Tang where the battle took place. Now I got to read them again. <laughs> I'm going to ask my brothers to back me up and a couple of members of the guard because it's going to be fresh, hard for us to get through this. 56th Security Police Headquarters, United States Air Force. Sergeant Jimmy Black. Sergeant Bobby Collins. Staff Sergeant Gerald Coyle, Sergeant Thomas Dwyer, Sergeant Bob Ford, Sergeant Gerald Fritz, Technical Sergeant Jackie Glenn, Sergeant Darrell Hamlin, Sergeant Gregory Hankerman, Sergeant David Hicks, Staff Sergeant Sergeant Michael Lane, Sergeant Dennis London, Sergeant Robert Mathias, Sergeant William. McKelvey, <coughs> Airman Edgar Moran. Sergeant Tommy Nealis, Sergeant Robert Ross. Crew of CH-53, tail number CH-68-10933, United States Air Force. These CH-53s. The 
those pilots did magnificent. Captain James G. Kays, First Lieutenant Lawrence E. Frolick, Technical Sergeant George McCullen, Sergeant Paul Raber, Sergeant Robert Weldon. The following servicemen were killed when their helicopter Knife 31 was damaged by enemy fire on Kotank and crashed into the ocean. Second Lieutenant Richard Vandegeer. Hospitalman Bernard Goss, United States Navy. Hospitalman Ronald J. Manning, United States Navy. Private First Class Daniel A. Benedire, United States Marine Corps. Private First Class Lynn Blessing, United States Marine Corps. Private First Class Walter Boyd, United States Marine Corps. Lance Corporal Gregory Copenhaver, United States Marine Corps. Lance Corporal Andres Garcia, United States Marine Corps. Private First Class James Jacques, United States Marine Corps. Private First Class James R. Maxwell, United States Marine Corps. Private First Class Richard W. Rivenball, United States Marine Corps. Private First Class Antonio R. Sandoval, United States Marine Corps. Private First Class Kaimar Turner, United States Marine Corps. The following, the following airmen and Marines were killed on the west beach of Koh Tang Island or while assisting wounded from the downed helicopter, Knife 21. Lance Corporal Ashton Looney, United States Marine Corps. Private First Class Gary Hall, United States Marine Corps. Private First Class Joseph N. Hargrove, United States Marine Corps. Private Danny G. Marshall, United States Marine Corps. Staff Sergeant Elwood E. Roombaugh, United States Air Force. And I guess, is that it? Yeah. That, that's all of the following, uh, but there's a lot of other, just we got to remember the, the living that are, sometimes you could call them walking dead because of the tragedy that they encountered on that day. And we just want to remember all of them. Thank you, man. I returned to Cambodia every other year. I retired from the Marine Corps in 1985. Four of us returned for, as the first veterans to return in 2000 uh, to search for our missing. The Staff Sergeant Rock Grumbaugh, U.S. Air Force. Joseph Hargrove. Gary Hall, Danny Marshall, Ashton Lonnie, five missing, and I return every year. I go to the embassy to give my little kick to continue looking for our missing men. I won't give up. Do I think they'll find them? I look at them, but I'm going to keep pushing it. These men also, because they turned it the last battle of the Vietnam War, we're still pushing to get recognition for that. These men did not get the Vietnam service ribbon, nor the Vietnam campaign ribbon. But we're the last 41, they're the, this campaign, at this mission. The dead from this mission is the last 41 names on the Vietnam Wall. 
So we want the recognition, and we I'm asking Dan if you if you got any power to push the politicians. It's been in committee twice, and that's as far as it got. It wouldn't cost the government much just to give us a ribbon, give these men recognition. That's all they want. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep fighting. Thank you. The 41 names of the men who gave their last full measure of devotion during the Mayaguez rescue operation are the last 41 names on the wall of the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C. We are now going to have taps played by the Wyoming Army, Na Wyoming National Guard Honor Platoon. Please take, please stand. Please take your seats. The Patriot Guard riders have asked to make a special presentation. The National Museum of Military Vehicles would like to thank the participation and assistance of the Wyoming National Guard Honor Platoon. We would like to thank the Fremont County Sheriff's Department who assisted us with traffic control downtown. And we would most particularly like to thank the assistance for the escort provided by the Patriot Guard riders. If we could have a round of applause for these three folks who helped make this event possible. This concludes our formal ceremony. Those of you who wish a special Founders Tour of the Korean War and Vietnam War American experience in the Puller Gallery, Mr. Dan Starks will be leading that tour immediately following this ceremony, beginning in the lobby of the museum. Thank you all for attending today, and if I could please, one last round of applause for our five American heroes today. <laughs>